two, one, displacement velocity and acceleration. And I guess this will be part number one. So this is with regards to calculus, all right? So once you start going over and you understand how to take a derivative, you're comfortable with all the major rules from you know product rule, chain rule, and so on, you're going to start to do uh, some applications, which I kind of like. And one of the applications is from physics. Now, the problem is that sometimes students will come into calculus and they have never really seen physics before. And it makes this particular applications a little bit odd in the beginning. So I want to just give you an introduction in this part one, define certain things, um, tell you why they're defined the way that they are defined. Okay, just so that you uh, understand where they're coming from. And hopefully by the end of the video, you know, you'll have a sense that, okay, you know, I feel comfortable with this concept of displacement, velocity, and then acceleration and how intuitively uh, it applies kind of to everyday things that we might want to be able to study. All right. So first of all, I'm going to jump into um, scalar versus vector. Now, some students may know what the difference already is, okay, depending on what background you had. But, okay, for those that don't know, so the difference between a scalar and a vector, so they're both measurements of some particular quantity. Now, I'm going to, you know, talk about, okay, the scalars and vectors, okay, with regards to kind of distance displacement, okay, speed, velocity, and then acceleration. But in general, okay, so a scalar is nothing else but simply a measurement with a magnitude. So if you measure something, so for instance, if I measured, um, you know, if I'm walking along and I measure my distance that I actually cover. So let's say I'm moving in this particular direction, all right, and I wanted to um, cover a certain amount of distance. So that particular distance, Maybe we've walked 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters, maybe a kilometer or something like that. So let's say I've walked for you know 10 kilometers okay, in total. Now, that would be simply just a scalar because of the fact that it only constitutes a measurement which has just a magnitude. And a magnitude will include the number itself, so in this case 10, and then a unit which just simply tells you what units you are utilizing. So that's nothing new to you in terms of having magnitudes, but then, you know, what is the difference if someone says, well, then what is really a vector? Well, the difference is that you would take a vector and you would say, you know, let's say you've walked 10 kilometers, but now you actually say, I've walked 10 kilometers east. Now you've given it a direction. And as soon as you give it a particular direction, then you make it a vector. So a vector is a scalar plus some kind of a direction. So you have a reference point, And then with regards to a particular reference, it depends, you know, in this case, where you have walked or what was the actual distance that you have covered. Okay, so that's the differences between scalars and vectors. So the vectors will always have a particular direction. Now that direction, uh, believe it or not, is up to us how we define it. You know, so if you have okay, a direction where you're just going along, let's say, you know, you create a reference point and you know, here is your reference point and you started and here you say that this is the starting point in terms of zero, but you know, you can walk either in this direction if this is, you know, one dimensional or you can walk in this direction. Okay. So if you do that, Okay, in one or the other. Now, if you're going in here, so of course, you know, you, what is that? Is that east? Um, I don't know. Maybe it's even north. Maybe it's northeast. So you don't know which direction you're going. And with respect to a reference point, you can say that, well, this is actually in the positive direction. So this might be plus. And then this is in the negative direction, which we also can designate a direction with just simply a sign with respect to some kind of a frame of a reference. And scalars don't really care about a direction. All they're interested in is the actual magnitude itself. So please remember scalars, there's no direction at all. We're just simply interested in a magnitude, but a vector is the magnitude 
plus an actual direction. So you have to specify, okay, which direction it is with regards to a certain reference. And that reference could be either reference as you see here on the screen where it's either positive or negative, or maybe positive means east, okay, and the negative means west, okay, or maybe it's north and south, depending on what that is. All right. Now, for reference purposes, if we do have, you know, if you are very familiar with your Cartesian plane, you know, and if I would draw something like this, you know, let's say we'll go through here, indeed, you know, in the up direction is positive, in the down direction is negative, to the right is positive, and then to the left is negative. And that's kind of how we um, define our Cartesian plane in terms of a uh, definition based. So that's scalar and vector something that you can keep in mind. So please remember, you know, vector is an actual magnitude plus an actual direction. Now, this really comes about when you are starting to talk about, for instance, this displacement, okay, and then the distances itself, and then what is really the difference between these two. So this is interesting. So if I take this, okay, so this distance um, versus my displacement, so something that we should know what the distinguishing features between the two are. So if I take this, you know, what is a distance and then what is a displacement? I actually really like uh, kind of going back into physics and then explaining it from that viewpoint. So, you know, what I've done is I really like this particular website. So this is physics.info. So if you like, you can look it up. And this is, you know, they kind of talk about displacement and then distance. And notice, that for displacement, what they say is, it is a vector, so that means it must have some kind of a direction, and it measures um, the spatial interval between two locations measured along the shortest path connecting them, all right? Now, we can skip all the little items there, but then if you look at distance, it says that it is a scalar. So distances are actually scalar. So when I was describing it in terms of giving it a direction, then really I was talking about a displacement. The distances are scalars, they're just magnitudes, and they measure the same thing, the spatial interval between two locations measured, but along the actual path connecting them. So there might be a particular path that connects and we wanna know what that distance is. So let's try to visualize that, but and I do want you to know that it's the spatial interval and spatial can be in 2D, right? It can be in three dimensions, right? And then you can imagine you have two points somewhere and you wanna connect them through. So here is you know a very simple example that I want you to think about in terms of how can one think the differences between distances and displacements, and when is it possible that they're actually kind of the same, and the only difference might be that there's only a direction. So first of all, you know, distance is a scalar, so that's something that we have to think about. So it's only magnitude, there's no direction. And displacement is a vector, so that is important for us to know. Okay, so that's the first key difference. The other thing is, okay, so let's imagine, okay, that we have you know, some starting point in here, you know, we have a hill that we're going to go walk up on and then so on. And then, you know, we're eventually going to get somewhere. All right. So here is our start. And then here is going to be our finish. So that's our end point right here. And now, if you take this, and you wanted to know what the distance covered is, then of course, you know, what you would be doing is you would be kind of walking along here, as you are traversing this distance and that distance would have been going and I'm going to change the color here you know you have to go up all right and you have to go down okay and then you have to go up again okay and then you have to go down and then eventually you're going to get there right so now we can imagine and we can figure out what that distance possibly could be now, in terms of the displacement, so displacement, at least for us, when especially when you're just starting within calculus, it is actually going to be in one dimension. Notice that these hills, for us, we're thinking, well, this is kind of two-dimensional, right? You know, we have a two-dimensional path. The displacement really is you have a starting point and then you have an end point. So it is a straight path all the way through. 
So that would be the actual displacement. The displacement is the distance that you've actually traversed through the entire thing. So that is my displacement. Now, of course, okay, in terms of the displacement, I you know can't kind of cut through the actual hills. I would actually have to take the distance. But the displacement from one point to the other is the shortest path between those two points, which always, as you know, is going to be a straight line. So that is a straight line that connects those two particular points that we have. The distance, okay, is the actual path that you take to get there. So that would be the key difference within here. So distance takes on the actual path that you take there, and displacement is the shortest path that you have, right? So that's what you would be gunning towards. Now, if you're thinking of a map as well, so if the map is, let's say, two-dimensional, right? So let's say I have, you know, a map in here, and then maybe... You know, this is kind of how the X and Y Cartesian plane is, you know, and then we're maybe we're starting from over here and then maybe we're supposed to get all the way over there. But, okay, so what we would do is as we're running along, so let's say maybe the path, the actual path was something like this, right? And then we finally got there that way. And we can find out what that distance is by going through that entire, okay, path. I mean... If we connect those two and then we would say, if you imagine that it was a string and that particular string, you can take it and then, you know, you, you would make the curves out of it, but then you would straighten it out. You know that that distance would actually be much longer than the direct path, the shortest path between the two. So here, this would have been the actual displacement. And we can calculate and find out, measure exactly what that is. Now, we know how to exactly do measurements between two points, so that's not a problem. So when you're starting this initially, you know, you can have this confusion between distance and displacement. Sometimes they are interchanged in some way. But if you're really thinking it about it from the viewpoint of physics, they are actually different, right? Now, the key also item is that the displacement is a vector. So there must be a direction. So some particular direction that you might be going in. And that direction, okay, is dependent on what you're studying. You might have directions in terms of east, west, so, you know, in, in terms of those particular items or north and south. But you may also be talking about, you know, displacements in terms of, you know, positive and then negative and, and so on. So, you know, within here, in terms of the displacements that we would have in here, okay, you know, you might run into this particular displacement right here, where you would actually measure the displacement both in the X direction and in the Y direction. So within here, for instance, you know that, okay, in the X direction, okay, you know, you would be T going right here, and then in the Y direction, Okay, this would be going right there. And then you can specify what those directions are. In calculus, when you're just beginning this, everything is going to be assumed that basically it's just either going left or right or up and down. And those, in terms of the directions, are going to be thought of positive to the right, negative to the left. Okay? And then that negative sign just tells you that it is to the left-hand side. Or if it's up and down, okay, then again, up is going to be positive, down is going to be negative. It aligns exactly with the Cartesian plane, so the XY plane in terms of how it is defined. But those magnitudes are there, okay? So, for instance... If I wanted to, you know, let's say make it purely one dimensional and I would just talk about, okay, this, okay, right here. And then I would say, okay, so this is zero. And then let's say that, you know, I am starting from this direction, okay, over here. And then I'm going to be ending up all the way over here. So I am going in this particular direction right there. So to the left. Okay, if this is my start, but notice that here, so maybe this is one, you know, maybe this is two, and maybe this is negative one, and this is negative two. 
So if you wanted to measure the displacement in here, so the displacement itself would have been your final destination, which was negative two, your start, which was at two, and if you remember, that is the change of the displacement. And that displacement actually is designated with an S. Now you might say, hold on, distances, displacement, didn't we always talk about that it's gonna be D? Okay, so D for distance. It is sometimes, but the actual true variable that is used is S. So within here, so if you wanted to calculate, this would have been final minus your initial, so your start. So this would have been negative four, okay? And that would have been your actual displacement that you have. And this negative sign just simply tells you, okay, so what the actual displacement was in terms of the direction. So if you're saying that you're over here and you said that you're at negative two, negative two, so the negative just means you are to the left of your reference point of starting at zero. And then here, if you say at two, then you're to the right of the reference point, which is zero. And then what is the actual change? The change is negative four because you've walked negative four, so four steps to the left where the negative just simply means to the left, okay? And if you were doing it vice versa, then you would have walked four steps to the right. In terms of the distance covered, it's four, okay? It wouldn't be negative, it's just four. We do not need the actual negative in terms of its direction. So the negative will associate a particular direction for us. And this is gonna be true throughout, okay? With regards to these um, speeds, velocities as well. Now I do want to um, mention to you, and this is actually pointed out in here. So within here, so the, the actual symbols. So if you take a look on the screen, so where it says distance, and then it, you look and it says symbols, so it tells you actually where the origin of the symbol is. So the origin of the symbols for displacement. So why do we use S? And that is the Latin word for space. So basically thinking like you are, what's the space between two locations? So two points, okay, within. And that's where the S actually comes from. And that is uh, also utilized heavily in physics. And you'll see that in the calculus courses as well. Now, the next item Okay, so now that we have this displacement and then the distance, so you can hopefully try to get some intuition in between, um, in, in between them. Now, what about speed and velocity? So, you know, what is the difference here? So with speed and velocity, which are very much interchanged in everyday life. So within here, if you're thinking about these, speed is actually considered, so within physics, okay? So speed is a scalar. All right, and then velocity is a vector. And velocity is nothing else but speed plus your actual direction. So it is kind of the same thing as displacement where displacement is really, you know, the actual shortest path. So the distance between the shortest path that we have and then the actual direction that we carry out. Okay, so speed, uh, velocity, sorry, is the speed okay, within a direction which is added. And we you, we do utilize, you know, the V, okay, that we have within here. And in terms of its definition, so in terms of defining the velocity, so it is the change, okay, of your displacement with respect to time. So as time passes by, you know, how is your actual distance changing? And that is a velocity. So that is a rate of change. So that rate of change you have seen actually, and you have seen this before, probably all the way back to grade 10, grade 11, okay, if you're studying this. So it is a change and it is the change, okay, in your displacement all over the change in the time, okay, that it takes. And right here, that is now the interconnection within calculus and derivatives. So basically, since this is nothing else but simply the slope okay, that we are seeing in our displacement. Now, our displacement is with respect to time, so t. So if you take the derivative, 
So if you take the derivative of this, you are basically getting your actual velocity. So that's what we're going to have. So that's kind of what happens within here. So our velocity is nothing else but simply the change, okay, or the derivative of our displacement. Now, speed is just simply magnitude, so it is a scalar. So it is only interested in here, but without any direction at all. So you do not care what happens with the direction. If you're going left, if you're going right, or if you're going up, or if you're going down, it doesn't matter. You just want to know what the actual speed is. So velocity within here, um, if you are defining it and you find it in calculus, this is going to trip you up a little bit because you're going to have positive and negative results. You know, so if someone says you have a, you know, you might read it as, oh, well, there's a negative velocity here. Like, what does that mean? It just means you're going in the opposite direction, okay, of your movement. So if you are defining positive as right, okay, if you get a negative result, that means you're going left. So that's what actually happens there, right? So in terms of, of the actual um, velocity itself. And if you're just interested in the magnitude, you know, you can take the absolute values of your results, so meaning you just remove the negative if there is one, and then you know, you know, how quickly you are moving, okay? So what you see on the speedometer in a car, so if it says, you know, 50 kilometers an hour, you're just seeing the speed, right? Now, of course, now nowadays cars may give you a direction as well, okay, that you're moving along, then you actually have a velocity because you know the direction. But if you're just looking at the speedometer mm -hmm. and then the police doesn't really care what direction you're going, okay, they just wanna know how quickly you're, you're passing through. So they're measuring your speed, and then they can figure out if you've been speeding or if you haven't been speeding, meaning you have been going past a certain um, point in terms of a speed. So that is the speed and velocity and the difference between the two. And of course, as we are moving along, so if we were walking, you know, if you're thinking about these mountains, you know, you're going to be kind of um, going sometimes faster, sometimes slower. If you have a constant speed as you're going all the way through, right? So you're moving at exactly the same speed. I mean, it's very rare that that might happen. You know, you can imagine that you're driving a car, you're going to be speeding up, slowing down, so your speed will be changing. Um, but if you're going the same speed, they will just be constant, okay? And that's what you're going to be noticing. The last one within here in terms of acceleration. So for acceleration, acceleration is known as um, a vector as well. So it does have a direction, um, and this particular direction will be with respect to how you are moving. So for acceleration, okay, if you're thinking about you know speeds, acceleration is how your speed is changing. So acceleration is basically asking us how does your speed, how does your speed, or in particular your velocity, Okay, so your velocity, how does your velocity change? And in here, within calculus, when you're beginning this, this study, it will be either, you know, are you speeding up? Okay, are you speeding up? So your speed is increasing, or are you speeding, okay, or slowing down? Slowing down. And for, you know, speeding up, Okay, and again, it will just depend on which direction you're moving. So acceleration can be positive or negative. Um, it just simply will tell us, okay, if you're speeding up or slowing down. Um, so that's something that we have to think about. So in terms of this speeding up and slowing down, that means that your velocity is changing. All right, so your velocity is changing. Now for acceleration, we typically will designate it with an A. But acceleration is nothing else but the derivative of your velocity. And your velocity, right, was the derivative of your displacement. And therefore, we need to put another derivative here in terms of assigning it to acceleration. 
So what you will have is, for example, so if I would give you an example to end this off, so let's say my displacement is equal to, and I'm just kind of making this up, so this is, let's say, 3, okay, and then maybe I have t squared minus, I don't know, 4t, let's say, plus 5. So we have a dependence on time, and let's say this will actually tell us what the actual displacement is okay so depending on time t you know might be positive might be negative and this is what's happening you can think of a particle you know possibly moving left or right um, depending on what t is so if you wanted to find out what the velocity is you would have to take the derivative of this so the derivative of here would have been six this is t minus four so that is the derivative itself so that is now velocity and my acceleration would have been a derivative again so this is the second derivative which has been just simply six now these do also have units the standard metric units that we use so this would have been in meters that we use it doesn't have to be in meters if you're using some others maybe centimeters or something else but if you are standardizing it, and that's typically how it is introduced in calculus in the beginning, okay, so this will have meters, this will be meters per second, and then this will be meters per second, okay, that's because it's speed per second, and this is written as meters per second squared. Mm -hmm. So that is the unit for acceleration, and that's the metric standards for these. They don't have to be fixed in this way, but that's what they are, all right? So this is just an introduction in terms of displacement, kind of thinking about what it is. Um, velocity, which is just a change of rate of your displacement, okay? And then your acceleration, which is the change of velocity, which just means are you speeding up or are you slowing down? And then what happens there? In the second, Okay, part of the video that I will do on this displacement velocity and acceleration. Um, we're gonna take on examples like this. I'll try to make it much more visual so that you can see it as well. Um, I'll pull up decimals, we can work with it. We'll take derivatives, see what the meaning is, and then we'll plot things up and then go back and forth in between so that we get comfortable. All right, see you in a future video. Bye everybody.